There was another story DiBiase shared at the time Andre had a match against Bam Bam Bigelow at Madison Square Garden. Bigelow wasn't happy at all with how the match was going, and Andre wasn't cooperating. And so afterwards, Bam Bam threw all his stuff together in the back, walked out, and he quit. Bigelow later said that Andre was right, as he realized later that he did have a horrible attitude. What was your dealings like with Bam Bam Bigelow? Well, I was his bitch. It was Bam Bam Bigelow against Leaping Lanny back in the babyface days before I became the genius full of glory and renown. I would wrestle Bam Bam Bigelow, and he was an arrogant prick, and he was horrible, and he, I thought he sucked, and he never washed his gear. One time he had me in the leg scissors, and it smelled like, I don't know, a cross between ammonia and cat piss. Oh. And I was starting to doubt whether or not I made the right career choice by getting into the ring at all. <laughs> so I looked at the schedule and it looked like I had about mm, seven more matches with Bam Bam Bigelow. And that was it. So I said, just like a condemned, you know, murderer on death row, I was Xing off the days. Yeah. You know, I was going to be free after this. Oh. You were biding your time. Yeah. Now, I'll say something nice about Bam Bam. There's got to be something nice. Go on Wikipedia, and I think he um, rescued some children in a fire. Yeah, he did. We got that story up on ProWrestlingStories.com. You tell me what happened then. Right, so off the top of my head, um, Bigelow was coming back from a trip to Japan. He was with ECW at the time, and he saw a fire burning down his road. And this was like well past midnight when this was going on. And he heard kids screaming from inside of this house. And so what he did was he busted through the door, went upstairs. I think he went through a wall, took the kids out, and in the process, he saved their lives. But he burned about 40% of his body. And so he ended up being in um, the hospital for a couple months after that. But, you know, he was a hero in this instance. And um, that situation, you know, ironically, wasn't too far off from his in-ring moniker. But, you know, you said you were going to say some nice things about him, and that was the positives. So tell us your real thoughts. Well, it's the opposite of my father, who sacrificed himself on the road so he could give Randy and I a beautiful life. And, you know, always be there for the family, the family, the family. He put the family ahead of himself. He ate third, he ate fourth in his family. You know, he made sure his children and his wife, my mom, ate first and he ate fourth. You see what I mean? And where Bam Bam never went to the Motel 6, he went to the Acme Ritz Central Arms Waldorf Plaza, whatever the hell it is. You know, where they have the real cushy towels? Sure. Whatever, whatever it is. While he used $100 bills as toilet paper. And then I see in the Tampa Bay Times that um, his wife is... Uh, filing charges against him for non-payment of child support. So, you know, good for him that he saved all these people in the fire and bad for him that he didn't support his own children, but he supported his own fat ass. So that's just what he was in the ring. Yeah, he had a poor attitude. And I remember, I believe it's in the Boston Garden and he's a little late and he's bragging about something. He says, Hey, I just got a blowjob from an arena rat. And, and so I said, right in front of the boys, and I said, I said, did you keep the receipt? <laughs> he says, what do you, and everybody laughs. And he says, what do you mean, Pafo? I said, you are a very ugly man. And I just thought if somebody gave you a blowjob, that you must have paid them. And everybody laughed. And... He says, what, do you want to get trouble with me? I said, it's got to be easier than working with you. Oh. And everybody laughed. You see what I mean? And my plan was to kick his patella. Now, don't bother looking it up. That's your kneecap. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's what I do to fat people. And anyway, I didn't like him. And he never thanked me when I would, like, lose to him on TV. You know, I mean, on, on all these shows, I would lose, 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 lose. And he never said, thank, thank, thank you, 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 nothing. And it's etiquette to thank the person because they're not jobbers. They're the ones that make you look good and you know better. 
How did that go in the end with Bam Bam? You know, obviously you guys were sparring with words. Who backed down first? I think he blinked. And I was glad of it because I would lose my job. Yeah. But I think of all the fantastic things Vince McMahon has ever done, pushing Bam Bam was probably the dumbest thing he's ever done. Because myself, I would not pay a ticket to see that guy. I would buy a ticket to see Chris Jericho. I would buy a ticket to see the Young Bucks. I would buy a ticket to see Kenny Omega. And, you know, I would Rey Mysterio and all these people. You see what I mean? But I wouldn't pay to see a fat guy in a bodysuit that smells like cat piss. Well, to be fair, you know, he he was quite agile for a big guy. He was doing the moonsault off the road. That's like, yeah, you don't, you don't sweat much for a fat person. Yeah, I heard that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't pay to see the fat motherfucker. 